Hello, I'm Professor Toybox, and with me today is... Agent P! <laughs> he has such style. Today we're going to build Agent P's lair. Here is a screenshot of his lair from the Phineas and Ferb TV show. It's a round chamber with a domed ceiling, and there are curved support columns or ribs along the walls that run from floor to ceiling. A raised floor circles the room, and on one wall is a raised platform with a console, a red chair, and a huge monitor where Agent P gets his mission briefings. Along the other walls are various gadgets, suits, and equipment. There's also an elevator and a clear green tube that serves as one of the ways in and out of the lair, and the colors consist mostly of whites and various shades of blue. Now, this is going to be a challenging build, because unfortunately there's no way to replicate this setting in the toy box with as much accuracy as I would like. The Disney Infinity developers did not provide any terrain pieces or blocks with the necessary shapes, or any styles with the right colors and textures. Plus, we don't have any clear tubes for the elevator, or any Agent P specific decorations for the walls. So all I can do is make the best use of the building pieces and textures that the Disney Infinity developers did give us, and try to capture the essence of this setting. So, we'll start by placing a terrain block for the floor, and I'm going to use this flat terrain block that you see on the ribbon there. And uh, it's not the big one, but it's the next size smaller. And we're going to put this directly under the house, underneath the terrain. And I'm going to actually put two of these down. I'm going to put one just like this, and another one right below it. And that just provides the spacing that I need, and I'll take this top one back out. So now this is at the correct level. And I'm going to go ahead and style this terrain block using the frosted white world. That's going to be the main part of the floor. If we cancel out of that, you can kind of see what that's going to look like. And you'll also see <laughs> that it allows some of the sun in a little bit, so this will be kind of interesting. Okay, next thing we'll do is block in the walls. And for that, we're going to come up to the basic blocks drawer, and I'm going to use this large block wall. And I'm going to place this first one. Let's see. We want to place this like that. And if I flip this around, you'll see what I mean. It's the side that's on the back, the left side there. So we'll go ahead and style this, and for this one, for the walls, we're going to use the robin's egg style. I'll set that to be my theme. And it's a little dark, but it's at least got some texture there for the walls, which kind of fits. Okay, so pick it up, put it back down. All right, the next piece is going to sit one block apart in that direction. We're going to do the same thing on this side. So we've left a gap. And now for this one on this side of the wall, and it's kind of hard to get in here to see this, but you'll notice it's not colliding with the wall. It's not red, so it's not this way we're doing it, it's this way. And I want to come up and put it about right here. This uh, panel is three blocks wide, so I'm putting it one block in to the left, just like that. And again, we're going to leave a gap, like that. And then we're going to flip this around and do the exact same thing on the other side. So right up against that wall, and we'll leave a one block wide gap. And then for this side, we're going to mirror that other side. So let me line this wall up with that one, and then bring it over and put it right there like that. And then again, we'll leave a block gap and another block gap. So that's the outline for the room. 
All right, now we'll come down to the large floor and we're gonna put the flooring around the perimeter of the room. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. You could use a terrain block like this one or the one by three at the start of the drawer. Connect this to a path and try to get it so where it's just sticking up out of the floor. That's a lot of work and unfortunately when you do that, um, the console <laughs> isn't connect. It'll you can't connect the console to a path, so the console is either going to sit halfway in and out of that floor, or uh, it's just not going to work. So we'll take the easy way out, and we'll just put this uh, large floor piece in. And for this, we're going to style it to use the one right next door, the blue scales, and I'll set that to be my theme. And now we're going to put a one block wide uh, bit of flooring around the perimeter of the room. So like that. Like that. And by the way, it doesn't matter exactly where this room sits. This time I'm building it. It's not exactly centered on this terrain block below, but that's all right doesn't need to be perfectly centered and it does not need to be right below the house either so that's fine because the player is never going to know they're going to teleport in and out of this space all right and then that leaves us a bit of a dilemma here so we'll have to use a couple of small floor sections to fill that in and I use the large floor just to minimize the number of blocks here. So there's our ring around this, and then I'm going to put two sections here, like that, which will serve as the platform for the console. And there we go. Now we're going to pick up this block wall, and I'm going to fit this right in here, just like that. And we're going to style this, if we come back to the left, I'm going to use the plastic too, and I'll set that to be my theme. And this will be the theme for the rest of the terrain blocks, which is why I'm doing this one last. And we're going to use this to fill in the gaps. This is where those support ribs are going to go. But the support ribs aren't going to fit in those uh, spaces perfectly. And so that's why we need these to kind of fill the gaps a little bit. All right. So there we go. It's starting to take shape. And yeah, it's not round, but I don't have any round pieces I can use. So that's about the best I can do. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and add in the monitor. And we can find that up under the set pieces. We'll go to the left. I think that might be the quickest way. I think it's under set pieces. Yeah. The scare floor video wall is about the closest thing we've got. So I'm going to put this right up here against that wall, and that's why that wall had to be oriented the way it was and flipped around. So we're going to place this up here, just like that. So that's the monitor for Agent P, where he gets his mission briefing. And while we're right here, let's go ahead and go up to the Creativa Toys drawer. And I want to put in the pieces that we need up here, even though I'm not going to hook these up yet. We'll put in the object generators for the gadgets that Agent P will use for his missions. And we'll also need the teleporter. And we can place this right up here if you want. I think that's what I did in my toy box originally. Or we can place this out here like that. And we'll probably have to rotate that to get it to orient the right direction. And this one will go ahead and drop up here for right now. So now we have a way to get down into the layer. Alright, so far so good. 
now we get to the tricky part of this build because we need the support ribs that go up from the floor to the ceiling. And if you look in the blocks drawer, we don't really have a piece that we can easily drop in and use. The closest thing we have, let's see, is this piece right here. And unfortunately, I need it to stand on end. <laughs> But I can't rotate this so that it stands up vertically. I can only rotate it this way. And so in order to rotate this to be the direction we need, we're going to have to use a path. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to drop this a half a block back from where that is at. And that's the piece that we're going to drop in place. And this is how it has to be oriented. And actually, let's go ahead and slide this back like this. And I'm, we're going to put one down for each of these. And it doesn't need to be perfect as far as how it's lined up with that white section there. I just want it here and kind of out of the way a little bit. And you want it with the small end facing towards... Uh, Agent P's layer. So we're going to use a path to rotate these and stand them up on end is our goal. Okay. And now that we have that, let's scroll over to the long block. And we'll use this for our spacing. And once again, we want this to be a half a block out. And I need two of them. Okay, and then I'm going to put two of these down below, and I can only go one up. I can actually go two up, so we'll do that. And these blocks are not going to stay here, but they're going to help us as we place our path. So what I want, actually before we do that, what I want is when we stand that piece up on end, it's going to sit here, halfway in and out of the wall. Because if it were sticking in here, the rib just sticks in far too much into the room. So I want it to sit here, which is why we put this half a block back, just so you know. And now we'll come up to the Creativitoys drawer. And I'm going to show you how to do this for one of these. Oops. I'm not going to do this for all of them. I'll do them all, all the rest of them offline. But I'll show you how to do one, and the others are identical. So we'll come over to our path tool. And the first point needs to be halfway up the wall, so about a half a block above this. We need to be centered on that wall section. So we're going to start here, but we're going to go to the other end of this block. So we're going to set it right here. That's where the first point goes. And let me go ahead and do that again because it didn't put me in point mode. And I don't want to come back from <laughs> all the way across the toy box. So we'll drop the point. This time it puts us in point mode. All right, so we're going to go up. We're going to come to the top of this block and go half a block up. And then we're going to come to the end of this block, half a block up. And to the bottom of this block, in the middle, half a block up. And then exit. So there's your path. It's offset a half a block. And if we come to the properties, we are going to set the looped property on and auto start off. All right, so now we have a block that's supposed to be circular. <laughs> uh, well, that's not up far enough. That's why. That only went up a block and a half, didn't it? Starting here, that's one block. 
That's two blocks actually, so we need to go up. One, two. There, that is more round. And we'll go ahead and pick this block up and just make sure the measurement is correct because it should be a half a block above that. And it is. Okay. There we go. That looks better. All right, so now we have our path. Now we can go ahead and take these blocks out. Oops. Ah, oh, crud. <laughs> All right, let me do this again. I'm going to add a point. And we're going to come up. All right, so that should be the correct distance. And let me just verify that real quick. One, two, right in the middle of that. All right, so it might be better <laughs> just to put one block below and not two. But anyway, there we go, there's our path. And now we'll come over and attach this block to the path. So with a new path connection, come over here, add that in. And then we'll come up to the block and open the logic menu, go into the properties, toy box path. And for the reset point, we're gonna set this to be 50. So halfway around, we're gonna move this block halfway around to the other side. All right. Orient along the path should be on. And you'll notice when I did that, it kind of stood it on end that way. <laughs> so now you can see if we go and rotate around to the opposite side, then it'll be standing in the correct orientation. So that's why we set the reset point to 50. And why we put the starting point over here on this end away from the layer. And all the rest of these should be fine. Vertical offset, I don't know why that's set to... That should just be zero. All right. But now we set the reset point and you'll notice the block didn't actually move there. And so we need to do one more thing. And we'll come back to the Creativitoys drawer and drop a button down that we can use to reset the path. Yep, there it is. Okay, and on the button, we'll do a new logic connection. When pressed, come over here to the path, and we'll do a reset and stop. And if we come over here now, come out of the editor and push the button, you'll notice the block has now rotated halfway around and is now in place right where we want it to be. You'll notice also it's rotated just a tad, which means if we didn't have this white plate in here, like this, there would actually be a gap in here. And unfortunately, if you come into the block properties, toy box path, and you come down to the rotation, it only lets you rotate in increments of 15 degrees. I really need to go about five. <laughs> so we'll have to live with it the way it is. But when you're in the toy box running around, it's not too noticeable. So that's how we do one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and go offline and do all of the rest of these beams the exact same way that you saw me do it here. And then uh, I'll come back in just a moment. Okay, so at this point I've got all of the paths created. I've attached all of the blocks to those paths. And you can see I've also set the block properties to orient along the path. And I've set their rotation. And I've also hooked up my button over here 
to all six of the paths. And I've also moved my <laughs> terrain block over a little bit. But uh, now we're ready to go ahead and push the button and snap all of the blocks in place. And so go ahead and do that. And now you'll see all of the blocks have rotated around 50% of the way around the path and are now sitting in their correct place. And I left my uh, guide blocks in here for right now just so that you could see how I have it set up. You can see this one's a half a block below there. I took the bottom block out. That made it a lot easier. And then uh, we're up above into the terrain halfway. So now if we come in here and look, you'll see all of the blocks are sitting in there perfectly. And so that's great. Now, one of the things that might happen to you, and this happened to me the first time that I built this, is that you may find the blocks are facing the wrong direction or something like that. And what you can do if that happens is you can come into the properties. You can come down to the rotation property and change that. And that will rotate the block around to where you need it to be. But as it turns out for me, <laughs> They worked fine this time, so that's great. So I like the way that looks. All right, so now that we have those, we just need to add a few little decorations, and the ones I need are from the interior toy box. And so we're gonna come out over here, and I am going to drop down a toy box door, and we're gonna use our little trick to bring the interior toys out. So I'll place the door, open the properties, We'll go into the destination, and I'm going to do a new toy box, new interior. And it doesn't really matter what I call this, I'll just call it A. And we'll save, and now it's creating an interior toy box and linking it to the door. And you've seen me do this in other videos, but if you've missed those, now we can go into the toy box. And this should load fairly quickly, but I'll fast forward and meet you there in a moment. Okay, here we are in the interior toy box. And all I've done is place a boom box, turn off the music. And to save a little time, I also placed a button and a time delayer. And so one of the things I would normally like to do is use spark mode. But of course, it's, oh, it's going to let me select this today. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't let me do that, and I have to use the magic wand. But we'll go ahead and, when pressed, I'm going to come over and invoke the time delayer to start the delay. And on the time delayer properties, we'll set the delay time to be five seconds. That should be plenty of time. And then we'll do a new logic connection when delay is completed. Come to the toy box door and change the level. And on the toy box door, under the properties, I'll take the require confirmation flag off. So now I have a way to invoke the toy box door with a bit of a delay. And so at this point, let's go ahead and actually find what we need in these drawers. So one of the first things I'm going to need is going to be under the Let's see. Electronics and appliances is what I'm looking for. Here we go. And if we scroll left, we're going to use this one for one of them. So we'll go ahead and leave it set on that. So I'll exit out of the editor. And then this is the trick to bring the interior toys out if you weren't familiar with it. So what we do is we push the button, which will start the time to layer. That gives me five seconds to open the editor. And now with the editor drawer open, the time to layer will invoke the toy box door and bring me back to the original toy box. I'll fast forward and meet you there in just a moment. 
Okay, here we are back in the exterior toy box, and now if I open the editor, we have the drawers from the interior toy box. And the first thing I'm going to do is put uh, Doofenshmirtz's Innator <laughs> over here on his tower. And this will sit in here nicely. So I like that. And we'll put it uh, about like that. And then if we keep going left. We find Doofenshmirtz's telephone. That could make a nice little decoration for the interior of the uh, layer. So we can come down here and maybe sit this back in this corner like that. Go a little bit further left and we come to the headquarters console from inside out. And that makes a nice little console to place right here in front of the uh, in front of the uh, monitor. So we'll put that there like that. And then if we go down to seating and beds and we go to the right, we don't have anything like that red chair, but we do have this uh, lab chair. So I'll put that down. So that kind of gives Agent P a place to sit, so that's good. And uh, at this point, that's everything we need from the interior toys. And so now we can come over and pick up one of the other toys. And drop it, and that puts us back in the other toy drawers. So that's good. Okay. So now we'll come up here, and I want to make sure the orientation of those uh, teleporters is right. So if we come out here, teleport, it has us facing the phone. So I want to turn this so that we're facing that way. So we're going to turn this 90 degrees to the left. Oops. So that way. And then we'll come out of the editor. Step on our teleporter. And now this needs to go 90, de 90 degrees to the right. So like that. and then come back out of the editor, and now those teleporters should be oriented properly. There we are. Then we come inside, do our business. And we come back out, and it still points us this way, but you'll notice Agent P is facing the correct direction. And the reason it put the camera here is because the building is right here. So that's good. All right, one last thing. We need to cover up that entrance. So to do that, I'm going to use a uh, decoration, but it's not going to sit there because of the collision box with the teleporter. So we're going to need to use a path to put it in place. So I'm going to drop a path right on top of that, and then we'll drop a point out here like that. And once again, for the path properties, everything under here should be fine. We just need to turn off the auto start flag. Okay, now the piece we need is down under building sets group two. And probably the quickest way to get there is going to be to pick one of those up that we dropped last time. So if we come down and pick this piece up, and put it back down. The piece I need is two to the left. So that's what we're going to use to hide the teleporter. And again, I can't set it there directly because of the bounding box with that. 
And so we'll drop this right here for right now. And it has a logic menu, and you'll notice I can connect this to a path. So we'll come over to our path, connect, and now it's sitting right on top of that and kind of hiding it. And you got those little rings coming out of it, but it almost looks like it's something the fan is doing <laughs> for the air conditioner. So I really like the way that looks. And the nice thing too is, is even with that sitting on top of the teleporter, you can hop up on top of that fan and it'll still let you use the teleporter. So that is really sweet. All right, I think that's enough for today. We'll hook up those object generators another time. But that's my recreation of Agent P's lair. And with that, the build exercise for my toy box is done. Next time, we'll start working on the logic for the games and missions, beginning with the boys' first task of distracting Kansas so they can leave the yard. And one thing you'll notice... <laughs> These couple of these blocks are no longer where they are supposed to be. A bunch of them are. So if we come down here, though, I think we can push this button and we'll be okay. And nope, it didn't do that. Interesting. Okay. That's very interesting. Well, if we come in here, turn this on and back off, what does that do? Yeah, that's really interesting. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But these are all wacky. Oh, look at the paths. All the paths are really messed up. That's what happened. Huh. We pick this point up, put it back down, no, wow, that just got all messed up, very interesting. So what probably happened here is that the, uh, <laughs> putting that path down up top somehow did something with these paths. And so essentially what we'll have to do is delete these paths and recreate them. The nice thing is that the building um, the building block properties are already set the way they need to be. We'll just need to recreate these paths. And to verify that, we should be able to come over here and if we delete this path, interestingly, it left that block there. But we should be able to come back and just place that back here and then drop our path again. Wow, I don't see that very often where it does that. But since it did happen, it's easy enough to show you that there's no need to panic. Now it didn't put me in point mode there, so let's go ahead and do that one more time. There, yeah, this time it put me in point mode. So now we can come over here. One, two, three. We'll recreate our path. And that's centered underneath that block. And if we exit, and come back up here and set the path properties. Uh, auto start off, turn on looped. Connect this to that. And now it automatically snapped around in place because all of the block properties are set correctly. So yeah, all we need to do is recreate these paths and then we'll be good to go. So let me go ahead and do that offline and I'll be back in just a moment. 
Okay, so I'm back and I've recreated the paths and reattached the blocks. And these three all worked fine. <laughs> these three, however, are backwards. And why that is, I have no idea. Sometimes the paths can be a little bit tricky to work with, but um, there's no need to panic. It's easy enough to fix these. So if we come and select the blocks, this is where I was saying earlier, we come down to that rotate property and we'll just rotate them 180 degrees and that should solve our problem. There we go, just like that. So yeah, you don't need to panic. It's easy enough to fix it. You just got to fiddle with it a little bit. But once we get this all set up, it'll be nice. So we'll set this one to be 180. And the same with this one. It's unfortunate that it's a little buggy and that happens sometimes, but like I said, it's easy enough to bounce back from. You just recreate your path or tweak the properties a little bit. This one, you'll notice, came in at a much greater angle than it did before. And so we can come into this one, for example. And if we change this to 15 degrees, that squares it up a little bit better. So those all look good now. And this would be a wonderful time to save my toy box. <laughs> but I'll do that as soon as I end the video. Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> next time we'll start working on the logic for the games and missions. Beginning with the boys' first task of distracting Candace so they can leave the yard. Until then, I want to thank you for watching my video today, and if you're enjoying this series so far, please hit the like button and leave a comment to let me know what you think of my toy box. Also, if you like Disney Infinity and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, just click my photo in the lower right corner. Well, that's all for me today. I'll see you next time.